Hi, my name is Daryl Thorpe. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on my six favorite plugins that I use all the time in pretty much every one of my mixes. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Soon is one of those just incredible plugins that it works so well. It works pretty much every time in a lot of applications, but at the same token, it's extremely simple, quick, easy to use. For the most part, it's pretty much put on a track where you have some harshness and let it do its thing and then adjust either the depth of how much it does it. In other cases, I've also changed the resolution sometimes, but you have the depth of how much it works and also the resolution between normal, alt, high, or ultra. And I find that usually in ultra mode, uh, especially I'm on a pretty fast com computer, if your computer is a little bit on the uh, less CPU uh, enhanced <laughs> computer, you know, try it out to see where it works best for your CPU processing power. But for the most part, even with normal mode, it still sounds really good and it works really well. So. I can give you a quick little needle drop of this vocal that I'm looking at. Because these roses, these dark roses, I can't let you know. It's just really in this 3K range right here, really taking out a nice sharp dip of that super pointy frequency and making the vocal feel really nice and smooth. So here's without. Because these roses, these dark roses, I can't let you know. Whew. So automatically, like I said, just turn it on. All I've done is add the depth. I'm not sure that's a DB, so I'm just gonna say it's it stocks at three, 3.5, and gone up to ultra, and all automatically it's vastly improved the vocal sound. In the factory pr default presets, he's got some the drums, bass drum, snare bottom, cymbal smooth, uh, especially with uh, room mics can be in a particular undesirable location for recording, or the drummer has the worst sounding cymbals ever made by man and also is bashing the ever living, excuse my French shit out of them to where you want some room in your drum mix, but however, the cymbals are just so ungodly loud. This is a great way to uh, handle some of that smoothness out to where you still get some of the nice push low end of the kick drum in the room and also the snare decay. Uh, overhead compressor. And then somebody else was telling me about, there was a preset in here for the bass amp, which I haven't done yet. And he's got even, presets in here for lavalier microphones if you're doing some any like that for a podcast or anything so he, here's some great presets in here also it, you know smooth also can double as a deesser uh lady rap ds like there's some great just tools in here just click away i would imagine you can download this and try this and try it out so it's one of my favorites I, i'm so glad i found it and it's always in my arsenal go-to grab as soon as when I'm mixing. UAD Neve 1073, one of my favorite go-tos since they came out with this plugin. They also now have the uh, Neve 1084, uh, which has a selectable high frequency and also a high pass and a low pass selector on that particular module. But as far as like a preamp EQ goes, this is my favorite. Nothing says, I, I just on every genre of music you can use this thing on and it, it feels incredibly musical and sounds incredibly musical to me every time. I can't speak enough of how much I love to use this EQ on drums, vocals, guitars, keyboards, pianos, organs, you name it. It's amazing. So this is what I've got going on on this lead vocal. Because these roses, these dark roses, I can't let you know, but these dark roses. So let me just bypass it real quick and I'll just play it for you. Because these roses, these dark roses, 
I can't let you know. So I, I, I know, in this case, all I'm really doing in this situation is I'm taking a little bit of the harshness out, 3.2, and scooping that out. I'm also taking and adding a couple dB of low winds just to fill out his vocal a little bit more. So it's not a big drastic change. But let's just say I'm going to go drastic. Let's say this mix needs to be like a pop, pop, pop super mix. So this is probably what I'd do. These roses, just brighten the snot out of it. Roses, I can't let you know. And then thicken it up a little bit. These dark roses, now all of a sudden it's just like this nice bright. You to go. Probably. But these dark roses can't. In the current application I'm listening to it, is it too bright? Yes, but if I was doing a really, really big pop, bright, shiny, compressed mix, maybe not. Because these roses. But then let's take the whole thing, uh, for example, let's go to the kick for a minute. So there's our kick drum, no EQ, minus what was recorded. Just gorgeous top end, and also beautiful low end. Bigger, 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 bigger. Great, then if we're gonna add a little bit more attack to that guy. Let me just save my session as, like, so in case I mess something up. I forgot to do that. So that's on the kick. So let's just do something to kind of similar on the snare. I'm going to mute the snare EQ that I had on the mix just to show you. That's what I recorded. Sometimes in an application, that can be a really good, useful tip, trick to do. So the other cool thing about, I'm gonna go back to the vocal, because it just might be, just to show you real quick. I'm gonna turn down the fader gain, and then if you click shift, and you go over here, you're in mic mode now. Watch. Uh, I know that's extreme, but if you really want to mess something up real quick. The same application goes, hey, if you've got something that's kind of recorded in a, the recording is a little bit less than desired, you can take things and put them into mic mode and on a lot of the UAD stuff. Let you know. Just make it, These dark roses. turn it into something really cool. But it's, it's amazing because it's still, really, that's musical. Can't let you know These dark roses Don't want you to go These dark roses Can't let you go And then I did, I talked to the, the, uh, the powers that be over at UAD because there is there's the pad in here, and there's also the mic. They did uh, model the mic input to have between uh, low impedance and high impedance, whether you're using a, a condenser or a ribbon. So you can change that as well. That changes the tonality. But they went ahead and they put a uh, output gain. I know there's a fader, but then there's also an output gain knob. And the reason they did that is because when they, when they were modeling the channel strip, they realized that when you play with the fader, it does change the tone of the signal. So they wanted a way to where you could play with the mic preamp to distort things, move the fader around to kind of adjust the tone a little bit, but then just have an actual output gain that does not change the tone when you're turning the level up and down. So it's pretty smart, really, really cool. Love it. Let's go to bass real quick. One last thing. 1073 on the DI real quick. Let's just, so this is just a DI. I'm gonna bypass it. Bypass the auto align, hold on. There we go. So just stereotypical DI sound going into a Jensen Transformer DI at Sunset Sound, nothing fancy, going into the Sunset Sound mic pre, turn it up, no compression. I don't think there is any EQ, I don't think. 
So standard, sounds like a DI, yay team. Not my favorite thing to do, but let's just go ahead and bypass it. Then you can turn up the, the line input. That's a little crunchy. Okay, so let's try. So there's no distortion, and if I go one more click down, right, it goes off. But then all of a sudden you can put the pad in. So there's no processing bypassed. Now I'm hitting the preamp and I put the pad in so I can crank the preamp up a little bit. And now I've just got kind of a sexier bass tone going on just with the DI. If I want to add some low end, I can like go down to 60 Hertz. And that's where I just turn the output down a little bit. That's one of the fun things about this plugin. There's so many options. Love it. Brainworks BX Townhouse Bus Compressor by Plugin Alliance. Uh, I think this thing came out about a year ago, I'm guessing. God bless you, Dirk. Um, it's just one of my favorite new stereo bus compressors. I've always loved an SSL style bus compressor on my mixes. Uh, when I'm working on an SSL, I generally use the bus compressor that's in the console and I've always had great success and enjoy what it does. Uh, when I'm not on an SSL, I usually have a smart Alan Smart at my disposal, which is one of my, the C2 especially, which is one of my favorites. But then when the BX Townhouse bus compressor came out and I started messing around with it on my stereo bus, I was like, whoa, this is it. Brief backstory, if, you don't, if you're not aware, Townhouse was a studio in London and they had all SSLs, I believe, in their rooms and they were the, one of the first ones to create their own external SSL style bus compressor. And they called it the Townhouse Bus Compressor. So let me just play you a little bit of it. Okay, so that's with, I'm gonna just play a little bit, no, no compression. Okay, automatically, I'm, when I bypass the, the townhouse bus compressor, I immediately miss what it's doing. I love putting on a bus compressor on the mix bus pretty early in the mix phase, and I kind of mix into it. I, I Well, kind of. I do, I do a lot of the times I mix into the bus compressor where I'm getting my kick to sit just right, and I want the, the compression to kind of squeeze my mix and tighten it up as much as I can. Depending on the source of music or material, I usually stay at two to one or four to one ratio. Tack wise, it just depends on the song. Sometimes I can go pretty medium or medium slow and release, I'm generally at a medium attack. And because my headroom's always out of whack, I usually, my makeup gain is, is nominal. I usually don't make up, I don't have to make up use makeup gain um so because of that i'm just gonna if i play around with it real quick play the track back and just go ahead and mess around here you know i mean even that sounds pretty good but when i was mixing it i didn't feel like it needed this much compression You're really hearing it work there. So what happens if I keep the same threshold but do four to one ratio? You know oh yeah. So 
it's back off the threshold now. Right there, I was messing around a little bit. I just went one tick slower in the milliseconds and then one tick faster on the release time, keeping the ratio still at 41. And that's actually sounded pretty good there. That sounds really good. That's a nice, I don't want too much compression. I generally only want a couple of dB of, of squeeze going on on my mix bus. I find that any more than that is just a little bit too aggressive. Uh, that's just me personally, how I work, how my ear is, but that's not always the case. Some, there's been a couple, couple few choices in my career where I've mixed something and I'm just, hey, let's compress the snot out of this. And, and the, the client or producer was, was very happy to oblige my uh, over heavy, heavy handed compression. So that's my BX townhouse bus compressor. Some of my favorite rooms in the world, the Oceanway Studios, now called United Studios. Uh, but it's the same rooms, essentially. This plugin made by Universal Audio is a great, amazing room emulator, um, especially because you have generally three choices of microphones. You've got, uh, let me go back into the position here because you have the close, medium, far, three sets of mics. And in these three sets of mics, you can change the mics to be a sweet 12, C12A in cardioid. Then you click again and now it's an Omni and that's the close choice. Uh, the mid choice is a C12 and Omni, a KU3C in cardioid, a KM54 in cardioid, and then the far rooms is my favorite, which is uh, you got a U67 in cardioid, a U67 in Omni, a C12 in cardioid, a C12 in Omni, a KM54 in cardioid, an M50 in Omni, and then why would you use anything else? Sorry, it's just gonna be that, that, because the M50s, we've got, uh, at Oceanway we had um, two pairs of M50s, so, and I mean, that's just the room mic. And uh, I mean, I generally don't even mess with the other close mics, but that being said, it's, you can, it's such a, useful feature because you have all three positions and at the same token you can move them even further or closer as you want uh, as you can see here especially when i get to the c12s the close mics i can get them within a half a foot um you know that can be a pretty useful tool if you're going to do uh, a lead vocal that was recorded pretty dry but you needed to feel like uh, Perfect example, just to go to backtrack, a lot of times at Ocean Wave, when we cut vocals, I wouldn't put up baffles. I would just leave the singer in the, the in a part of the room with a carpet down so you wouldn't hear his feet. And because the room itself had just so much beautiful ambiance, you didn't really need to to do baffling to to kill off the ambience of the room. It was just usually so musical and beautiful. Uh, so that's a trick you can do as well, just to get depth into your vocal mic. Uh, another friend of mine, he was telling me that he finds it if you take the close mic and go, let's say the C12 in cardioid, it's because it's only a half a foot away, which is six inches, that's pretty close to where you would do a real mic, you can put it in re-mic mode and actually change the tonality of the microphone that was being used. Pretty great trick there. Uh, and you have the phase. Obviously you have a high pass and a low pass switch and then a mute. And then you can do, or you can choose to do all three microphones, which is a great trick with drums or an orchestra. Um, uh, yeah, not only do have I use this plugin in a drum setting, it's kind of my go-to drum setting plugin as far as uh, creating an artificial room. It's also, I've used it on string sections. Um, there's been projects where I've gotten 
strings in from one player who is a common thing now these days where one player is the arranger and also he plays all the parts and he just stacks himself so many times and makes up an orchestra and sends you a bunch of stems of the violins and the second chairs and the violas and cellos and stuff like that, mixing them all together, adding Ocean Way Studios into the room just to make it feel even more lush, like it was an actual orchestra. That's another trick. You want electric guitar solo to feel really spacious and roomy. Another trick there. Uh, there's just so many unlimited options. The one thing to think about is you do have the mode of re-mic mode or reverb mode. Reverb mode is when you put the plugin on an aux track and feed sources into it. And then re-mic mode is when you put the plugin on the track itself that you're trying to re-mic. So plus there's a pre-delay, there's a wet dry, uh, there's the balance, you can pan them. Um, and then you not only, you have two rooms, both A and Studio B. Uh, th this corner right here, funny enough, in, in um, Studio B was the sweet spot for years. The How many times I set up a carpet and drums and drum mics and ran cables over here because there's a mic panel right here in Studio B, I, c I can't tell you. And there's all sorts of different positions. That was another famous spot. On A lot of people like to record on the left side of the wall in Studio B. Uh, strings this way. It's just... And then the piano, uh, vocal solo, you know, just guitar, right there. You just get, and that's in the ISO. So this was the main studio right here, Studio B, and this was the large ISO, which has a different, uh, a little bit different timbre. I cut a fair amount of drums in this room and amps and stuff. It's kind of cool as far as a second space, but. Have fun with it, play around with it. I'll just play you a little bit. These are my drums that I have going on right now. And I'll unmute this. So here's A, drums one. No room. That's with. Okay, so that's with the M50s at far distance. So then let's go ahead and go to Studio B. So let's just do that. It's crazy to my ear, because when I hear that, I go, oh, Ocean Way. Check the phase. Sounds like the drums are in phase. Oh, and then let me click the... Yeah, it's in phase. You got the wet solo. And you can make it mono. For a more direct. That's nice as well. So just out of curiosity, that's the M50s. Let's go to like the... Let's, do, let's hear the 67s in Omni. Brighter. So here's a C12 and cardioid. Smaller sounding, interesting. Omni. And then K54. So here's one more thing. Let's go to the C12s and C12As and cardioid, and we're at some seven. Seven feet. There's a really nice way just to get a little bit of extra breath in there. One as we go. And a little bit more. Sounds better. Phase flip. I just can't. It's just, this thing's just too genius. Talk about the Brainworks BX Console SSLJ, the newest channel strip from Plugin Alliance that just came out. And uh, man, I've been lugging this thing. 
Uh, the dynamic section sounds amazing, as well as the EQ sounds great. I love the silver fader on the small fader. It's supposed to be a small fader. It just looks cool. <laughs> so I don't ruin my mix. I'm gonna mute. So all we're gonna hear is this guy real quick. I'm gonna turn the automation off and bang it to zero. So nothing's going on. Now this is my mono overhead call, which there's a little bit of compression going on. I think I was using a Blue Stripe 1176. So there's a little bit of compression going on already, but I'm gonna probably go a little bit more extreme and add a ton of EQ, so. And then of course you have the filters. Sound great. And musical. And then here's where this thing shines. So the dynamics is already in. God almighty. So what is that? That's three and a half to one with the threshold cranked up. So then you can just slow the release way down. Go back to the verse where he's not doing the ride. Look at that slow release. And then the fast attack. And then of course he gave you a mix knob so you can so you can do like a little parallel. I mean that's so cool. And then last but not least the high pass filter was for the threshold. So now it's just compressing everything above 600 hertz. It goes all the way up to 20. Oh, do that. 2000. So now it's doing the low end, all the whole band. It's not compressing the kick drum at all. I mean, and that right there is actually just the mono overhead coal with this compression going on. It's, that's kind of a cool drum sound right there, just in itself. Let's talk about the EQ for a minute. Well, let's turn the dynamics off. We'll Low end, sounds great. So does the top. Really super crispy. See, that's nice. Let's thicken it up a little bit. And then you can go Currently, this is the JEQ. That's in. That's the EQ. Different mid band. Man, so good. There's a drum loop for your kids. I mean, what else is there to say? But obviously, the, the one last thing, there is the input gain. So let's just see what happens when we when turn the... So you got 10 dB of input gain, and that's also the virtual gain. I love this thing. One of my just go-to reverbs all the time, quick and dirty, quick and simple, is the uh, Valhalla Vintage Verb. First of all, the plugin's 50 bucks. <sighs> I 
Hello. It sounds amazing. You have a mix control, you have a pre-delay control, you also have extreme control in the dampening and the shape, the diffusion, the mod rate, the EQ. Um, you can change between a sort of 70s version, which is a little bit different than an 80s version, and then also there's more of a modern version. Comes with tons of really amazing, great presets if you feel like getting, uh, just going through the motions and tr tr exploring all the presets for a particular sound. I'm such a big fan of the Vintage Verb opens up stock at four seconds with the concert hall and then just turning the decay time, making it longer or shorter depending on how much tail I think the part needs or the song needs and then adjusting the pre-delay. But in this case, I, I thought that the slide guitar needed a good amount of reverb. Incredible. So that's the concert hall. And then down the late, you have a plate. Amazing. Also the chamber, which I love. Ooh, really good. So I'm kind of curious, what happens when you go chamber now? Beautiful. No downsampling. Full bandwidth. Bright, clean modulation. I like the description on that. So I'm going to go back to 1970s. One last thing. like uh, Another thing to use on, let's say, vocals is the uh, uh, a room. And the infamous non-lin. <laughs> which is kind of... That's awesome. We're trying to get the 80s snare drum sound. You've got that trick on all of that in this one little plugin for 50 bucks. And then if you, uh, I can't remember, if you sign up for our account, you get the, just gonna look, it's the Freak Echo. If you sign up for an account, you get the Valhalla Freak, o, Freak Echo with it. Or if you have to buy a plugin, but anywho, the, this plugin is, free and it's a great delay and it's one of my man one of my just go-to delays for anything between uh for doing guitar or vocal delay like here i'll just do a little Such a cool delay. I love how the delay is very center, but then all of the uh, modulation shifting is going on on the left and the right to really c create a stereo, great stereo image. Love this delay. The Hala, can't go wrong with all the plugins in there. Shimmer, Vintage Verb, the plate, the room, and the, I think it's the eight tap delay is the other one as well. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope you enjoyed some of my favorite plugins that I use all the time and pretty much everyday applications when I'm working. I really, really hope you got some good information about that, and I can't wait for you to try these uh, some of these newer plugins out on your tracking, mixing, whatever it is you're trying to do. Uh, please leave some comments below. Uh, I can't wait to read them. Thank you so much.